So do you have any idea when my great-grandfather left yes. here with his statues? We know exactly. Oh. Uh, in 1888, uh, he was one of the first wave of uh, figurine makers that really they moved from this village uh, to go to the United States. And uh, uh, we have uh, the passengers list. Here it is, Mansueto yes. Regali. Exactly. Mansueto he was 32. 98 figurine makers uh, decided to move to the United States. All in that year. Wow. And that is really incredible. That's if you huge think about from this. a tiny village. Oh, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm always happy to be in Italy. From the first time I came to Italy, I felt inexplicably at home. <laughs> now I know why. <laughs> My gene pool is crying out. Toscana. Yeah. It'd be great to find out that Mansueto and Angelini had a, a nice life before everything started caving in and all these children and hardships and disease and everything happened to them. I'm meeting researcher Cinzia Rosello at the Riccardini Library to look for proof that Mansueto came from Tuscany. So I'm excited to be here to see if there's any records of my great-grandfather. Yes, we did some research and I've done some translation for you. Thank you. That proves that your family comes from Tuscany. Oh, Mansueto Regali, yes. My great-grandfather was born at 2 in the afternoon on the 12th of July in 1855. And the next thing I found is a record of a sort of conscription document. Oh. Let's see if you can read something here. Here's Regali, Mansueto. The beauty of it is that it gives us a bit more information about place where he was resident, where he lived. Corelia. Is that a street? Corelia? In small town. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And in this column here, it says that he was a colono, means that he owned some land. Oh, really? Yes. And he's only 20. Exactly. Wow. Well, Not bad. that's interesting. When he got to the United States, it was, he didn't have so much luck. But no? No. But anyway, so he's only 20 here. Things are still looking up. He's got a little bit of land. Exactly. And so we should go to Corelia. 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 Precisely. And you'll find more uh, traces of your ancestors there. Cinzi and I are heading into the Tuscan mountains 50 miles northwest of Florence to the village of Corelia, where Mansueto was born. This is the church where not only your great-grandfather was baptized, but we found records of many more of your ancestors baptized in this church. Oh, great. Starting from this registry. Ah, oh, Mansueto. Mm-hmm. And this says also the name of his father, Egidio. And his grandfather, Michele. Oh, yes. yes. And then we go even further. Look at this book, oh my and gosh. This is in Latin, with wow. old ink. 1758. This is son. Frediano, son of Giovanni, son of Michele. Wow. So they repeated Michele. Very good. So going back, so back, now back. We're going now the mystery, further. real mystery. Regali. Francesco, son of Michele, son of Giovanni Regali. Mm -hmm. So we can go even further. Go. Whoa. Uh -huh. Oh my. Wow. Back to Michele in 1640. That's exciting. It means that you have very deep roots here, here. in Italy. It's unbelievable. The church records trace my Italian ancestors back an incredible 10 generations, all the way back to Michele Regali, who was born around 1640, just 20 years after the Mayflower arrived in America. Well, I think you have a very classic Tuscan features. <laughs> really? Yes. The colors, the, you know. That's great. Renaissance. Renaissance. Cool. I'm officially from Tuscany, definitely. So that was startling to be able to prove it that far back. It's gone from being something kind of abstract to being very concrete.
Susan Sarandon has always felt an inexplicable connection to her grandmother, Anita. When she disappeared over 50 years ago, so did all chance of knowing about her side of the family until now. Susan's search has brought her to Italy, where she's just learned her family's roots in Tuscany go back almost 400 years. Now she's in Corellia, where Anita's father Mansueto learned the statue-making trade. She's meeting local guide Gabrielle Calabrese to find out why Mansueto left Tuscany for New York, a decision that would have a huge impact on the Rigali family. And here we are. You can see immediately uh, Luca many statues mm. around us. Uh, typical uh, 19th century style. So do you have any idea when my great-grandfather left yes. here with his statues? We know exactly. Oh. Uh, in 1888, uh, he was one of the first wave of uh, figurine makers that really they moved from this village uh, to go to the United States. And uh, uh, we have uh, the passengers list. Here it is, Mansueto. Yes. Regali. Exactly, Mansueto. He Regali. was 32. 98 figurine makers uh, decided to move to the United States. All in that year. Wow. And that is really incredible. That's if you huge think about from this. a tiny village. Oh, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really huge. And they knew what to do with their hands. Uh, like artists, a simple artist. Uh, but, um, so they could be more confident because they came with a trade. Exactly. For more than 500 years, the village flourished as the figurines sold all over Europe. But by Mansueto's time, life had become tough for the sculptors of Corellia, and news had arrived that in the land of the free, untold riches could be had. Mansueto was one of 50,000 Italians to cross the Atlantic in 1888. Between 1880 and 1890, almost 5 million Europeans left in search of a new life in America. Mansueto was an artist too. I like coming from a family of people that were artists, but it's just so sad because they left with such hopes and you know they found such hardship when they when they got to this land of opportunity. I mean, it's great that they managed to find a way to survive, but it cost them so much. Mansueto lived until he was 72 years old. But his whole life in New York was overshadowed by tragedy. I want to pay my respects at the family plot where he's buried with his wife and young children. Okay, I guess this is where it would be. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. And they're all somewhere here with my family, but there's no marker. It's really sad. Anita's not here, so we still don't know what happened to Anita. But this is a, you know, a family that suffered a lot. All these kids that died and nobody even has a, a marker. I mean, it's almost like a, a Potter's Field kind of thing, where they don't even have markers. It's so sad. I should get them a marker.